In this video, we're going to be uh, learning how to multiply and divide expressions with radicals. Uh, multiplying is a little bit easier than adding and subtracting. Dividing might be one of the trickier things, but we've dealt with a lot of the issues that come up with dividing, so we'll review a couple of things in there. With multiplying radicals, uh, you just got to remember your product property. As long as we have two numbers under the same kind of radical, the same index, then we're allowed to rewrite them, multiply them under that one radical, or, I mean, we could go back and forth between these two forms here, whichever allows us to simplify better. Uh, but remember, we can't multiply things that are outside a radical by things that are inside a radical. We multiply things outside together, and as long as their index is the same, we multiply things under the radical together. So let's do an example here. If I have the square root of 2, and I want to multiply it by a binomial here, two terms. Um, it works just the same. As usual, we would distribute things outside the parentheses, multiply everything inside the parentheses, uh, so we would do the square root of 2 times the square root of 8. That's our first multiplication. Because they have the same index, I can move them under one radical. Do 8 times 2, or 16. Um, and then I'll just work on my other multiplication here, my other distribution. Square root of 2 times the square root of 10 would look like this. And because they have the same index, I can move them under one radical. However, in this case, multiplying them together would not give me a perfect square, so I'm going to keep them factored. So we're going to be adding our square root of 16 to the square root of 2 times 10. So the square root of 16 is 4. And if I simplify this and rewrite it, I have all my prime factors 2 times 2 times 5. That is the same as 2 times 10 or 20. I have a pair. I'm taking a square root of something, so I could take a pair out. So I have 4 plus one of those 2's comes out, and we have the square root of 5 left over. So we have 4 plus 2 times square root of 5. I cannot add these two things together because uh, this doesn't have a radical. It does not have the same index or radicand, so this is my final simplified answer. So we're multiplying things under a radical as long as they have the same index. Let's do another example. Same kind of stuff here. Let's distribute. This time inside we're going to have a coefficient, a number on the front. So let's remember that we can't multiply that 2 by the square root of 15. We can only multiply things under the radical. So let's do the first distribution here. Square root of 15 times the square root of 3 would give me uh, 15 times 3. I could write them under one radical. I could say the square root of 45, but that wouldn't help me simplify. So I'm going to keep them factored for a sec. When we do this multiplication, that 2 stays on the front. I'm not multiplying that 2 by anything, but I can multiply 15 and 5 together. Um, I'm going to leave those factored as well. So let's keep factoring under the radical and take out some squares here, or some pairs. 15 would be 3 times 5, and we got this other 3, so let's put those together. So there's 15 times 3 in prime factor form. Let's do the same thing over here. Uh, let's do 5 times 5 times 3. Keep our pairs together. It's the same as 15 times 5. Uh, circle our pairs, take one of them out, cross them both off, so we got 3 on the front, square root of 5. In this case right here, anything that comes out of a radical is multiplied by anything on the front. So we got 1, 5, uh, so we basically have 5 times 2 on the front, and the square root of 3 left over. Um, so let's just keep simplifying, 3 times the square root of 5, we can't do anything with that. 
over here we have 10 on the front times square root of 3. I cannot go any farther. I can't add these two together because uh, the radicand is not the same. We have the same index for taking square roots, but the radicand has to be the same as well. I can't simplify any farther. This is our final answer. All right, so what happens if we start having to multiply binomials together? Um, get something that looks like this. 3 plus square root of 7. 3 minus the square root of 7. It's a good example. Um, when we get into division, we're going to have to remember what conjugates are. Conjugates are where we have basically the same numbers, same values, except for our sign changes. So that's essentially what we have. We have two conjugates here being multiplied. We're going to have to use that when we get into division. So let's see what happens when we multiply two conjugates together. Just like uh, multiplying any binomials together, we FOIL. So let's do our first terms. 3 times 3 is 9. Let's do our outside terms. 3 times negative square root of 7 would give us uh, minus 3 times the square root of 7. Can't multiply them together, we just stick them together. Let's do our inside terms. Square root of 7 times 3 would give us a positive 3 times square root of 7. And then our last term, square root of 7 times negative square root of 7, gives us a negative 7. I'm pretty much squaring a square root, so I'm left with 7, but we got that opposite, so it becomes negative 7. So what happens to our, our middle terms here? If we combine our middle terms, they're opposites, so they go away. Well, that's pretty much what happens when we multiply conjugates. That's why we do it. So we're left with our first and last terms. Let's combine them. 9 minus 7 would give us positive 2, and that's our final answer. So as you can see, multiplying conjugates gets rid of our radical sign. And that's true when multiplying complex numbers, too. We get rid of our imaginary number. That's why multiplying by conjugates is a good trick to use. It gets rid of the stuff we can't use anymore. So in this case, we don't want radicals. Um, we use a conjugate to get rid of the radicals, and we end up with a nice whole number there. Let's do one more foiling, then we'll get into division here. Uh, if we have a binomial squared, it's the same as multiplying two binomials. Let's say we have this binomial and we try and square it. Remember, we can't distribute our exponent to both these terms because they're being added. So they're two separate terms. We can't distribute our exponent. We have to rewrite our binomial twice and FOIL. Maybe you already know the shortcut here when multiplying binomials if you know your, your form that we use. If not, that's all right. We still FOIL. First terms, square root of 5 times square root of 5 just leaves 5. Square into square root. Let's do our outside terms. Square root of 5 times 2 would be positive 2 times square root of 5. Inside terms, 2 times square root of 5 gives us another 2 times square root of 5. And last terms, 2 times 2 gives us 4. Combine your middle like terms here. So we have, uh, we got the same index, the same radicand. We can just combine their coefficients. So we get 4 times square root of 5, 2 plus 2. Let's combine our outside terms here. 5 plus 4, we get 9. Standard form says that we would write our whole numbers first and our radicals second, pretty much like um, when we're using complex numbers. We write our whole numbers first and the imaginary number last. So in this case, we write our whole number first and the radical last. So this is our standard form. It's as simplified as we can get. All right, so that's multiplying radicals. Um, just remember that if you're squaring um, square roots, that gets rid of the radical. Let's do division now. What happens when we try and divide things with radicals? If I have a binomial 
being divided by a binomial here. Remember, we can't leave radicals in the denominator. Um, so we use the trick called multiplying by the conjugate. The conjugate is always the same thing as this, but with a different sign. And we always do things to top and bottom, not just the bottom. So if we multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, it will allow us to get rid of this radical in the denominator position. So we're pretty much multiplying binomials on top and bottom here. On the top, we would get 3 times 3, that's 9. Uh, keep going, foiling, 3 times the square root of 5. And we're doing the same thing again, plus 3 times the square root of 5, plus uh, the square root of 5 squared would just give us 5, right? And what happens to the bottom? This is why we use the conjugate. If you remember our trick when multiplying conjugates, we get rid of those middle terms and we're essentially just getting the product of the first and last terms. So the first terms would be 3 times 3, that's a 9. And our last terms would be uh, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. We want the opposite of that, so we get negative 5. So on the bottom we just have 9 minus 5. Now you could FOIL, do it all the way there, and see what happens to your middle terms. Hopefully you're starting to recognize that when we multiply conjugates, we get rid of those middle terms. That's why we use it. Um, so let's keep simplifying the top here. We got 9 plus 5, that's 14. And then our radicals here. Let's add our coefficients. We get 6 times the square root of 5. On the bottom we just have 9 minus 5, which is 4. And now if you remember that if we have a binomial on top, or two numbers over one number, we're allowed to break that up into two different fractions. So we have 14 over 4 plus 6 times the square root of 5 over 4. That might help us simplify. 14 over 4 can be simplified, and 6 over 4 here can be simplified or reduced. If we divide top and bottom by 2 here, we would get 7 halves. And if we multiply top and bottom by 2 here, we would get 3 over 2 and we still have the square root of 5 there. We could also write this um, a slightly different way here. We could say 7 halves plus 3 halves and stick the square root of 5 on there on the side. Either form is acceptable, but bottom line is we can't simplify any farther. This is our final answer. Alright, so anytime we need to divide things with radicals, use that conjugate trick um, if it's only one term, you could use a rationalizing trick. Multiplying by the conjugate is essentially a type of rationalizing. Um, so good luck multiplying and dividing radicals. Next video, we're going to use everything we've been talking about, multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting, simplifying, all so that we can solve equations using radicals of any nth term. So we'll get into that in the next video.